Hi, welcome to Dev Central Live. This is uh, Jason Rahm with the Dev Central team, and uh, with me I have uh, Joe Pruitt. Joe, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> Good deal. And uh, today we're here. We're going to talk about uh, this is the first in, in a series of podcasts we're going to do about the uh, the iApp, and the iApp is a new feature in uh, version 11 that uh, covers a, a breadth of services. But uh, today uh, we have with us uh, from the product management or uh, product man management engineering team, uh, Mitra Kelly. Mitra, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. Nice to be on. Good deal. And um, can you just give me a little bit of background of, of uh, what you do uh, for F5 in general? Well, um, I suppose I do a lot of things, but uh, uh, recently I've been working on these uh, new IAP templates. Um, previous to that, I worked on the uh, um, uh, version 10 uh, application templates, which uh, so it's just, this is the next generation of. Okay, so you had quite a bit of experience with the, the V10 templates? Yes, yes, I, uh, I wrote a number of the, the A10 templates and uh, Okay, so, that. okay, with, with that experience, what, what were some of the things that, that uh, you, that, like that was the first implementation of uh, the concept of a template in, in the, uh, the LTM. What were uh, some of the things you liked and, and didn't like about uh, what you could do with a template in V10? Well, you know, in V10, um, we we had a lot of a lot of power, but it was also uh, limited in what we could do. They weren't uh, customizable or anything like that, but it did allow us to uh, really uh, speed up um, creating a con a complicated configurations. And, uh, um, you could answer just a few questions and you know have a whole configuration put together for you. Um, you know, that's that's where the where the story ended. Once you know, they were just an initial configuration, but it was. Uh, it was a, a big breakthrough in what we could do as far as setting up complicated configurations quickly. Yeah, I, I remember uh, when when I first started using the templates. I um, also support a uh, a small deployment of of an LTM and a um, a place I volunteer and and uh, deploying Exchange through the template uh, was uh, some trial and error, and and I'd make a mistake in that, and then and then I'd have to go out and clean out all those objects to start over, and and so um, definitely it was it was uh, far superior to. Um, spending the, the the time to go through the uh, deployment guide step by step, but it still took some some trial and error in in, in getting it just right, um, which provided a little bit of frustration. But uh, now in V11, um, you know that that's changed quite a bit. And uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, what some of those changes are from mm -hmm. from V10 to V11 as far as uh, just uh, the concept of of application deployment. Well, you mentioned having to delete all of, go find and delete all of those objects in the version 10 one. That was, you know, to me, the single biggest uh, difficulty as far as the user experience when like, uh, it came to using them. Um, you know, because if you did make a mistake, you had to go and manually delete everything. That's all changed. In the new version, we've got, um, you know, they clean up after themselves. If you want to delete it, it just it finds every object it created and it takes care of it for you. And uh, you can just go right back into the template and uh, change an answer. And uh, it just updates your configuration for you. It's uh, it's as, as much as the uh, the previous version streamlined um, getting a a configuration based on a deployment guide. This new one streamlines it as much again. So the uh, the other great thing that's a you know a, a big deal difference is uh, you know with the old ones they were as they were with the new ones you can actually um, you can actually customize them. You can they're the, they're based on uh, on script programming. It's uh, accessible to you in the thing. You can make a copy of a template and make your own custom version if you need something special. It, uh, it just really expands what you can do. And you can export them and import them, so you can move it from from box to box. And and oh, uh, absolutely. If you yeah, create a uh, great custom thing, you can uh, you can export it. You can put it in an email and send it to. Uh, your uh, worker down the hall, and they can install it on their big IP and uh, have your custom configuration a moment later. That's great. And so, with the template itself, you 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 build a template, and then in the application service, that's where you actually apply it, right? You can um, define your name of of the application you're deploying, uh, apply it against a, a specific template like Exchange or SharePoint. And and then you go into that application service to change things around. And and I, what I really like is the component view, 
um, being able to have it's it's like network map on steroids because it's not just <laughs> here's here's a, a big picture of every object on your box. It's it's actually a, a picture of every object as it relates to your application, which is pretty powerful. Yeah, that is, that is a great a great view because it you know especially if you have a lot of different applications you're serving from the same big IP, it can be confusing to determine what's what. But this puts it all in one place and it gives you, and you know right from that page you can see you know if your if your virtual servers are running or if they're down or if there's a pool member that's off. I mean it's it's all right there visually presented to you which, for just the application you're considering. Yeah, I think that's going to be huge for operations. Uh, folks especially because I've worked in an environment where in any given box you might have 400 applications on a box and being able to, to unpack through a network map or even just a pool listing and, and, and find the ones that are um, specific to your application uh, it can be uh, quite difficult. So having that one component view in a particular application, somebody calls up, hey, my app isn't working, you, you get right to all those objects immediately. So uh, that, you know that's pretty powerful. Um, it is, it is, and I think right there, I think that's why, um, you know, even if you already have, you know, say an exchange confi uh, configuration, um, why you might want to uh, redeploy it using the uh, template just so you can get to that view and have the one one stop shop to see how all your objects are doing. Exactly. So on on the templates itself, there's uh, there's a way that the templates are written. You have the 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 help section, which is just HTML that you know, is in that left column if you go to the, the help, kind of like the, the way the GUI works today. And then you have the presentation and the implementation. What is, what is the, the presentation um, configuration? What, what does that, how does one uh, write that and what does it do for you? Well, um, the presentation section, that's how you define the whole uh, UI of your template. It's just, you know, it's, it's the one page that's where you ask all the, uh, all the questions. Um, and uh, that's written in a very simple um, little markup script that uh, we've developed here at uh, F5 um, and uh, called the, the APL. Uh, that and and uh, that lets you define, you know, uh, what kind of controls you want to use, what what you want, how you want to ask the questions, what you want the answers to be, um, and you know, every, everything about how you uh, how you take in the information from the user is handled in that section. And and it's it, you know it's it's extensible in that you know you can make things optional. So it, if you're if you have an application that may or may not have SSL, and you click no, I don't want SSL. There's no reason to ask all the SSL specific questions. You can hide that, and uh, all those APL commands are are defined out in the um, in the IAP wiki section out on um, out on Dev Central. Um, what what's one thing that uh, um, that you really like about APL specifically? Um, that uh, that was developed for uh, for V11. Well, it just makes putting the uh, user interface together really uh, quick and easy. Especially you know when I compare it to how I wrote them for version 10 with you know you know a lot of JavaScript and all these all these complicated things to get it all working. It was much more error prone. But this this is just easy. You just you know you just lay out how you want it, and it and our back end makes everything work out. Writes the JavaScript for you, and it just. It, it really makes writing these a lot faster, and I think it's something our customers are going to be able to pick up on without, without too much trouble. Yeah, I mean, I I can do it. So if I can do it, I know it's not that complicated. So <laughs> um, it was was not that uh, difficult to put uh, the APL together. And so uh, the APL is kind of the front end of your I app, and the the implementation section um, is is the back end. That's the one that does all the all the work. And what is uh, what is the Implementation section. Well, uh, the implementation section is uh, is basically um, what we call TMSH script, um, and TMSH script is uh, uses the uh, the TCL programming language, or uh, Tickle as is often referred, um, and has extensions to um, run you know every um, TMSH command that there is. You know, TMSH is our um, our, our uh, command line system for. Uh, uh, Doing these boxes, and you know, you can access any any module we have on the big IP. You can you can uh, set up and control through TMSH. So a TM, so since the templates use TMSH script as their uh, back end, it allows you to configure anything that can be done on one of these boxes through a template. So really, the sky is the limit in what you can do. And it's based on TCL, which is a well-known uh, scripting language uh, with good support on the internet. So that makes it, you know, a lot of people may already have. Uh, experience with it and um, 
and if not, there's lots of help. Well, if you found. if you've written written I rules, then you've uh, or in, in interaction with our I rules, that's based on a TCL. So okay, um, okay, a lot of commonality yeah. there. Yeah, yeah mo- so most will... most of our users that uh, yeah that that are I rules uh, developers are, are are good to go in that capacity. Um, which they, and uh, they get access to a lot more commands within the tickle language than we allow uh, in the I rules environment. You know, a yeah, lot of procedures, the fi- the file that kind o. of things. Yeah, yeah. Fi- procedures, file I O, and 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 all that other stuff. So, yeah. Uh, well, what about uh, um, reusable code in in the uh, TMSH or in the implementation in the APL script? There's uh, some common objects and um, and and routines that can be pulled in so that they don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. Absolutely. I mean, uh, there's, there, we, you know, there's, there's a full, uh, in, include file support, um, um, on both, both of these sections. Um, and, uh, you know, if I was releasing a bunch of reusable code, um, for the presentation and the implementation section that make a lot of things easier. Um, and they're used extensively. You know, we've written 23, um, I have templates that are going in uh, version 11 um, automatically with a product, and you know they all use these um, shared uh, routines, which anyone else who wants to author templates can also use. Um, but it's far more extensible than that. I mean, when, you know, a, a person could write a template; they could also write a library of uh, u- of useful functions and distribute that uh, along with their uh, templates. And so that, that, that's a whole other area that could be. Uh, possible expansions and you know, things that uh, we share on Dev Central. And... Yeah, cool. Uh, uh, what about uh, uh, any tips and tricks? I mean, you've written, uh, you probably wrote the bulk of those 23 uh, templates. So, what are some uh, best practices that that you would have for uh, for the community who will uh, potentially start e- either using these templates or or writing new ones? Maybe maybe two or three things that just jump out at you. Well, um, you know, when you're using them, they're 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 presented in you know, in well as simple a way as possible. Especially something like you know the HTTP template or you know the uh, the DNS template. It's it's just it's a very short number of questions. It's really easy to uh, fill it in. You know, it's it, it's and it's it's not such a big deal if you uh, if you get it wrong because you can just go right back in and uh, and change something until it's all working working right. So I don't know if I have a best pr- uh, practice as far as using them because they're. They're, they really guide you through them. Um, as far as writing them, though, that's, that, that gets a bit more complicated. Um, you know, I find, you know, if I'm going to write a new one, what, the first thing I do is I go find a template that's, uh, that's pretty close to what I want. Um, I uh, make a copy of it. It's something you can do right in the UI. Just make a copy of it, and then you can go in and uh, start adjusting it until it does exactly what you need for your new application. Um, and one of the nice things is we've got a wide variety, well, 23 different uh, uh, templates and they range from the extremely simple, um, you know, uh, setting up IP, you know, IP forwarding is, uh, you know, just, you know, a quarter screen of questions, or to the very complicated, you know, link server, for instance, is, you know, very long. If you need, if you need to uh, create a very complicated uh, um, uh, deployment, uh, that that's a good, a good one to uh, look at, uh, for example. Um, so that's what I. Would hey, we got a question from. Hey, we got a Absolutely. question from Brad. He uh, he wanted to know on the uh, the chat window here, um, can a template create and update data classes in TMSH? I'm assuming that by means uh, data groups. Uh, yes, as, as a matter of fact, it can. It can. Um, uh, we've done. I don't think any of the ones that are shipping with the uh, with the product do that, but we've done some experimenting with that, and it, it does work out. Yeah, my my understanding yeah, is anything you can do in TMSH at the command line, you can do with an IAP. Yep. Which is, you know, interestingly, actually, even more than you can do just as the uh, the UI, so the regular GUI. Yeah, and not just that. Since you can send out uh, system commands, you can do uh, a bit more than just in TMSH, right? Right. So That's you, true. you have That's a lot true. of control. You can you can, act, yeah. you can actually access the file system. You can you can write, you know, um, you know external monitors directly to the file system and and, and uh, use them as monitors. You can you can do a lot of a lot of things that really simplify. Uh, well, well, Jason, you wrote an i. Jason, you wrote an i app that you published up that didn't ever really have anything to do with the configuration itself internally. But you can talk about that. That gives a little bit of. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a little scope creep from talking about the application templates, but the um, but the yeah, the i app basically builds 
a cron scheduler for config backups into the GUI. Oh wow! That seems so. Good. The, w but you had to build the GUI, so the templates kind of build into the configuration parameters of what you wanted to do. But under the seams, you're making system calls or modifying the cron configurations and things like that. So you've got a yeah. lot of control. So. Yeah, I mean, there was some there was some stuff I had to do under the hood. Like I had to build, I had to put the uh, the config backup script out there. Now I could have done that all through the template, but I I, I put the uh, the config backup script out there and and built a directory for the backups to live in and and uh, you know the SCP parameters and all that could could be built into the template. I wanted to simplify just to show the power of what you could do with an IAP without having to build yep. it all out in the IAP. And uh, but yeah, as far as scheduling the cron and you know when when it when it would kick off, uh, I built that part into uh, APL with just some uh, tickle for loops to to build out the you know the hour and minute and time of day and day of week and and that kind of thing. Yeah, Brad just replied. He said, "Fantastic!" He was going to front end TMSH with some web scripts. He might look at doing that with an I app now. Cool, that's great. That yeah, in fact, Data Group is a wonderful is a wonderful um, use case for that. Being able to update your your data groups that's a really good use case for that. Yep. Yep. All right, cool. Well, we got kind of into, we're, we're going to break these um, podcasts up into the different sections about IAPs. We wanted to get into templates. So templates are kind of your first step. Uh, you've got the configuration, the front end GUI piece with uh, uh, APL. You've got the back end implementation with TMSH. Um, there's one more section on that, right? And that's how, how the user gets help when they're within an IAP. So we do provide a uh, help section, right? Yeah. As part of the configuration. Uh, yes, yes, we do. There's a there's a an extra uh, there's a help section where you can, um, you know, define you know use uh, HTML. It's a slightly stripped down HTML. It doesn't have you know links and some of the uh, bells and whistles you're used to. But you can provide you know to, uh, provide a description of everything that needs to happen. You know, I mean, you can provide descriptions within the GUI itself. But you know, it's it's nice to have more lengthy ones to. Uh, uh, explain, especially where things get complicated, um, and that's that's pretty easy to put together. It's right, just right there in the same uh, template file as the rest of it. You can app, you know, edit any of these things through the uh, the GUI, and um, and, and, and it uh, integrates with a big IP help, right? So you'll click on the help tab with, when you're within the IAP, and that help will be presented just like the big IP help is, right? Exactly, exactly, and it should look almost almost identical uh, when you when you yeah. use it. So. Yeah. Well, you know, we're we're over where we wanted to be on on time. I think uh, we we got an introduction on you know the the application templates. We appreciate your time, uh, Mitra, and and um, we'll probably have you back in the future to deep dive on something. But we really appreciate you making time today. Well, and, it's a pleasure uh, to be here. All right. Thank you. Thanks. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Be back for the next one. All right. Thanks, Joe. All right. Bye.